Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update. I hope that you have been doing really wonderful uh, this Sunday. And so I'm going to be taking you guys through the latest across the Atlantic. So there's lots of showers and thunderstorms developing across some areas. A new area is now highlighted that we should watch for some developments in the Atlantic. And over in the Eastern Pacific, there is quite a bit of activity going on. So we will be looking at all of that in this update. And so before I go into details, Please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important video. All right, so we're starting out with the Eastern Pacific and here we can see that there is quite a bit going on. On. And so there are three systems, three main systems out, uh, out there to the left of your screen. That is Invest 99E, likely to become our next name storm soon. In the center is Hurricane Fernanda, which we'll be looking at in a bit more detail very shortly. And then another disturbance, which is off the coast of Central America. That one could also develop during the next couple of days. And as we look at the Outlook uh, map here from the National Hurricane Center, both of these systems are given high chances to develop over the next seven days. That is why they're highlighted in red. As a matter of fact, here we can see high 90% chance for both of these to develop during the next seven days. Uh, southwestern part of Mexico also going to the Baja California Peninsula. Maybe even Southern California want to keep an eye on this over the next couple of days as it makes its way to the northwest. It could move by close enough. So let's see what's going to be happening with it. But going on to Fernanda, it has maximum winds of 75 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the west northwest it's nine miles per hour and as of right now the national hurricane center is not expecting that it will become a major hurricane but could be very close to major hurricane intensity at peak but i think it could actually become a category three out there the fortunate news is uh is that it is not a threat to land and so uh by the way guys speaking of the eastern pacific there have recently been some fires in hawaii if you haven't heard and they have claimed many lives so many livelihoods have been disrupted and my thoughts and prayers and my love and support go out to the people of Hawaii who have been impacted and even family members who have been devastated over the loss of loved ones. So my love goes out to all of the persons affected. And so now we want to drift over into the Atlantic and a new area is marked uh, where we could see some development take place later this week off the coast of Africa. We'll be going to that in a moment. But first we want to go to the Caribbean and surrounding areas. Here we can see that there is some shower and thunderstorm development, especially especially across parts of Central America, Costa Rica, going to Panama as well, and then into Colombia, Venezuela, and parts of Guyana. Not a whole lot going on for most areas. For the Lesser Antilles, there was some activity moving through, but most of that is clearing up this evening. It's ABC Islands, as per usual, nothing much is going on. Let's head further up north, and here we can see that there is this cyclonic rotation, some counterclockwise spin, along with some activity across some parts of Hispaniola, going to Cuba, Jamaica, so there is an upper level low in the area and that is helping to enhance all of the activity that we see. Earlier this morning in Jamaica, many parishes received some well-needed rainfall, even some thunderstorms in some areas. So that was very much appreciated. Nothing beats a good morning shower. And uh, this afternoon as well, some areas, especially southwestern parishes, have experienced some more rainfall activity. And uh, again, parts of Hispaniola going to some spots in Cuba and over over into Central America, especially near the Pacific coast, lots of showers and thunderstorms developing even into uh, parts of the Gulf of Mexico, which extends into Florida. There is some thunderstorm activity there, but for most other areas, it is pretty dry, pretty hot this evening as the day is coming to a close. And so now we want to go ahead and take a look at that area that the National Hurricane Center has highlighted. And so here we can see that there is no X. Now that X usually points out where the that low pressure area is but the thing is it hasn't yet developed but it is expected to do so as we head into the middle of the week and within this shaded area we could see some development as of right now there's a 20 percent chance of that happening within the next seven days so once conditions will be ahead of that system that next uh wave that will be emerging once conditions are favorable
comes ahead of it, then we could definitely see some development take place out there. The main inhibitor out there is that dry air. And look at this, this big pocket of all of that dry air and dust extending from uh, Africa coming across the main development region, even reaching the Caribbean. But eventually we're going to be seeing a reduction in all this dust and dry air, maybe as we head to next week across parts of the main development region. And that should allow for a better window of opportunity to see these tropical waves coming off and attempting to develop. So the wind shear is currently not a huge issue and sea surface temperatures are off the charts so with a moist environment with all this dry air kind of moving out and the more moist environment then we will definitely start to see some development out there maybe even multiple systems in a short amount of time and that is typically the activity to expect as we head to the peak of the hurricane season which is next month but we also want to consider the track of these systems and what is the steering force behind them well that is the Bermuda Azores high out there so it is a high pressure system of course and in the northern hemisphere high pressure systems rotate in a clockwise direction so naturally we have these storms being steered toward the west but take a look at this when we have a weaker high pressure system out there storms tend to move more on a northwestward track that is how they miss the caribbean but a stronger high allows for these systems to move into the caribbean maybe into the gulf as well until they eventually get that opportunity to move to the northeast crossing the eastern part of the United States so uh, this is a blockade storms can't just go through it so they have to move around it along the periphery so uh, this is a huge determinant of the tracks of these systems when they develop and also with a weakened high pressure system that explains why we see that kind of northwestward track expected within that shaded area and also that will help to keep a lot of the dry air and dust out of parts of the main development region so things could have uh, become more conducive as I said and that will allow for development but only time will tell what's going to really be happening guys and of course I'm here to keep you posted at all times so that you are never caught off guard and so that is what I wanted to share with you in this update and I hope that you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can and as always remember to be weatherwise.